These days, when most Americans think about pirates, they think about what they've seen at the movies. Films like Captain Phillips and the real-life taking of the mayor of Scalabama in 2009 updated Americans' take on piracy, basically moved us from the sail and rigging days of Captain Blackbeard to the outboard skiffs of Somalian pirates. I got a call uh, to my cabin, uh, very, um, very excitable second officer on the bridge shouting down, Dave, we've been pirated, we've been pirated, there's pirates on board. But since 2009, the business of piracy has made another radical shift. We're talking about a new kind of pirate. The global center of maritime piracy has shifted from here, the Somalian coast in the Gulf of Aden, to here, in the area of Western Indonesia. These waters, including the Malacca Straits, the Singapore Straits, and the southern end of the South China Sea, are the busiest commercial shipping lanes in the world. A full third of the world's commercial traffic passes through these waters. Shippers and government authorities point out that any one vessel's chances of being attacked are minuscule. But the threat and the costs are very real. Almost half of the world's pirate attacks happened here in the Singapore Strait or Indonesia in 2013. About nine times as many attacks as took place last year in the waters off Somalia and the Gulf of Aden. The most attractive item for the pirates is diesel fuel oil. Now the small vessels, a large number of them uh, commuting in this area, and they are targeted by the pirates. They just go on board, they bring another small tanker and offload 200 to 300 tons of fuel. The pirates of Singapore and Western Indonesia have a radically different business model from Somalian pirates, one that involves a lot less risk of getting caught or getting killed. They are taking over ships and offloading whole cargoes, including siphoning off diesel, naval fuel, or oil onto their own tankers. Here's how it works. One team of pirates will attack a vessel underway in the straits, approaching in a small craft, usually from the stern which is right here, the rear of the vessel, where they're less likely to be spotted. Other times, they move to the part of the vessel that has the lowest freeboard, or the distance from the water level to the deck, such as here. This particular vessel, which we filmed from a drone off the coast of Singapore, wouldn't be a likely target because it isn't holding a lot of cargo. You can tell by how high it is in the water. The pirates, usually with firearms, subdue the crew and take over the ship. Then they sail the vessel to a second location where a larger ship will be waiting for them. At that point, either the first team of pirates or a separate team from aboard the waiting ship will begin siphoning off the liquid fuel or using a deck crane to offload hard cargo, such as scrap metal. Once they have what they want, the pirates will usually depart, leaving the target vessel enough fuel to get to the nearest port but smashing up all their communications gear so they can't call for help. These pirates have business partners, buyers set up ahead of time, the kind ready to spend millions for a cargo, and that means organized crime. What you're seeing today is actually the indication of syndicates involved. More, it also involves some cases of, uh, what I say is uh, insider information. Multinational organizations like RECAP, which is based in Singapore and of which Singapore is a member, are trying to tackle the problem. And CNBC has learned exclusively that the United States will officially join RECAP this month. So naturally, some people ask, how is it possible for pirates to attack sea lanes that are so narrow and so crowded? There's two vessels out there. You can see the sterns of them. They're alongside one another. One of them is offloading oil onto the other one right now as we speak. Now chances are that's completely on the up and up, but there's no way to know. And if there were pirates on board with guns, nobody on that crew is going to alert.